Hello, I'm Opal Mitchell. I work for the Central Arkansas Library System and I work at the Nixon Library branch. And this is the Crafting with Opal program I do on Thursday nights at 7. And tonight I'm going to show you how to make a cell phone charger holder a fabric one that you can hang on the wall that you can uh, use to um, hold your phone while you're charging it. Um, sorry. My camera was moving a little bit because one of my dogs was walking around by the bottom of the the um, tripod there. Um, but uh, let's see, I'm going to show you real quick what I'm talking about. This is the example that I made. Um, it's something I found on the internet. <clears throat> and it's uh, actually fairly simple to make. Hi, Pat, how are you doing? <laughs> I guess you and Taylor are, are going to be watching tonight. I know you came by or, and got supplies. Um, but this one's pretty simple. Really all you need is um, one of these grommets. Um, uh, and it's something that you can buy that comes in a big set. Um, here, let me show you. Um, if you are ever going to make shower curtains or even just curtains in general, these are the grommets and stuff that you can buy. Um, I bought these from Walmart. Um, they come in different colors. Um, that one just happened to you know come in silver. I think they have gold and some probably you could find them in other colors too. And they're pretty easy to um to put together. Uh, they're just plastic. So they're um I wouldn't recommend using them um well, I guess yeah, since they're plastic they wouldn't rust or anything. So I guess shower curtain would be okay too. So um I made this one because I'm thinking about giving it to my sister. She's a huge supernatural fan, so if uh, th she thinks she'd like to have one, I'll probably give that to her. Because I had leftover fabric from a purse that I had made her out of this fabric. So, Alright, so let me put that up. So I'm going to go over how to do that. It's a really small and easy project to do. Um, let's see here. Let me put a few things out of the way. The fabric I chose tonight to make the one that I'm going to be making. I didn't have enough of all the colors I wanted, but... I have some leftover, I like to try to use up leftover fabric. This is uh, some cute little uh, fabric that came from a baby blanket that I had quilted for someone. And I uh, didn't quite have enough of this particular color, so I'm going to use some orange, solid orange, on part of it. Um, I hope Pat and um, Taylor like the fabrics that I chose to, to put in their grab-and-go bag. Um, and just to let y'all know, um, you may not have noticed on my original post advertising this program last week, um, I did put a note in it that um, we were um, giving away supplies for this program tonight. Um, only Pat and um, Taylor actually signed up to get the free supplies. But um, just to let you know, we're going to try to keep doing that through at least the summertime um, and maybe even beyond. It just depends on... Um, you know, how things go and how long it takes us to be able to start doing programs in the library again. I'm sure once we are able to do them in the library again, we won't be giving away supplies, you know. Um, so you can just come into the library and use the supplies um, for the programs because we, we have six sewing machines. Uh, yes, <laughs> Pat came every time. She said that you did, yeah. You and a, we had several... Um, people that came to the programs every month actually but um, uh, so we're going to try to uh, provide the supplies um, next let's see I think it's next week um, and it'll be next month also uh, it was a project that I had planned on teaching um, oh I think Joseph might be watching hey um, is a baby hat and a baby bib we were going to do that in the library I already had bought the supplies and everything for it um, so that's probably, yeah, I'm going to be doing that next week. Um, and so I'll have that available as grab and go. So tomorrow morning when we open up at nine o'clock, um, give me till about 10 whenever, before you call, because, um, give me, <laughs> we open right at nine o'clock and we don't get in the door until like maybe 10, 15 minutes before nine. And I probably won't have enough chance to, um, print up, uh, a sign-up sheet for the supplies that quickly 
So give me at least till 10 o'clock to get that list um, printed out and available for people to start listing people's names on there who wants to come and pick up supplies for that. Because with the, um, the hat, um, it's going to be a knit fabric, so um, for it to be stretchy. And um, I already have two different ones. Um, and I guess you can, I might try to put a note on there, because there's, the fabric for that, there's either a little boy print or a little girl print, which the boy print could be boy or girl in my opinion, because it's got, it's a blue, I think, with a little fox um, head on it. And then um, there's pink fabric with a little cat on it. So, um, kind of want to, if you want to pick, I'll, I'll, I'll let you pick um, which, which one you'd like to have. Um, it will be a sewing project, Pat was asking if it be sewing or crochet. I will be doing crochet, I think it's, I'm trying to remember what I plan for next month. I think it's just going to be a beginning crochet class um, the week after that. Um, I usually do a beginner's crochet class at the library once a year because there's a lot of people that always request um, to learn how to crochet or to knit and I'll do a beginning knitting one probably in July and it's just um, I covered just the very basics um, I don't know we'll have yarn we could give away for that but I don't know if we'll be able to give away crochet hooks or needles for that I'll have to find out um, if we've uh, got the money to to buy those type of supplies um, I might be able to find Maybe we have some donated ones. I might, might be able to dig some of those up. Um, so that's what we'll be doing the next few weeks. And we'll have another painting class next month, too. I think it's going to be towards the end of the month. where We should have two sewing classes next month. Uh, I think a lanyard also is another thing we're going to be making. So let me go ahead and get started. Um, be sure, if you're going to be following along tonight, to get have an iron handy and have it heated up. Uh, because uh, we're going to be ironing the interfacing onto the fabric that we're going to be using. It just makes it a little bit stiffer. Um, and the interfacing we're using is like a fleece interfacing that makes it a little fluffy. Uh, but it also makes it a little bit stiff too. So um, I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera over to the table so we can start getting started here. I'm going to lower this down too before I tilt it. So you can see, um, alrighty, we're going to be cutting and, ah, there's my orange piece. I went ahead and cut this, this one already, um, to the same size as my interfacing. And, um, for those of you who got supplies, I gave you pre-cut, um, uh, the interfacing for you to go along with that. That's just a, that's just a string. Okay. And so... I'm going to cut a big piece about this size out of this, and then a big piece out of this, and then I'll also need a small piece like this, because you're going to be working with um, two sides of the fabric. Hope, I wish this smaller piece could have been done out of this fabric, but I didn't have enough of it. It's going to go on the inside of this anyway, so you're really not going to see the inside of it, so that's why I didn't worry too much that it wasn't going to be matching. So um, we're going to start with cutting this out, and um, I'm going to need uh, two big pieces out of this and this one. Um, they're both going to measure ten and a half by six, um, the, so you guys won't have to cut your interfacing, but um, if you haven't cut your other pieces ahead of time, you'll have to be cutting that. And if you've got a print like this one that's up and down, then you're going to have to pay attention to that whenever you're cutting out your fabric. I've gotten where I really, really love using a rotary cutter in one of these um, quilting rulers because it makes it a lot easier. I don't have to mark my fabric, I just cut it. I don't, I mean, because I'm already measuring it with this, so I'm just cutting away without having to measure it and then get my scissors and cut it. But if you want to do it the other way, that is perfectly fine. When you're marking your fabric, Always turn it around to the wrong side and take that and your water soluble pin here and um, when you're doing it that way measure everything and, and um, draw your your pattern out and then cut it with your scissors but like I said I'm 
I'm not going to be doing that because I've got my rotary cutters. But, um, and my print is facing this direction, so I want it to be up and down. So that's why I'm laying my fabric like that. The, this one won't matter because it's that pattern, it doesn't matter what direction it goes in. So, eh, we want a ten and a half by six, and this is already six inches across, so that makes it great. Thank you. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cute. It's um, uh, leftover fabric from a baby quilt that I had made. If I guess it's been two years ago now, because the, the baby's going to be turning two this summer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we already know this is six inches across, and then I want it ten and a half inches tall, which this piece is already that size. So that's how big we want it to be. So I'm going to just kind of get close to the edges here. I know my edges are not straight, so I'm just going to... My ten and a half inch mark is somewhere right here, so I'm just going to drag that down. Yeah, because I'm not standing. I was standing to the side. It didn't quite cut it good for me. If you're standing right on top of it, it does a better job of cutting. But I stood off to the side because it was a little difficult to get to since the camera was right in front. I guess I missed. It didn't cut very much at all, did it? I'm just going to try it again. Let's see here how close I can get to the, where I cut before. It works great if you get it cut the first time. There we go. That's much better. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut straight across here. And the Supernatural fabric, whenever I was using it, I had to be a little more careful when I was working with that fabric because I wanted certain parts of my design to show up when I got done. Like, for instance, the words supernatural and I wanted the family business I wanted all of that to appear on the front where it could be seen easily because if you look at the pattern here it's got a lot more stuff going on and um, so I wanted that part to be on the pocket so I had to make sure when I was cutting those pieces out that I was going to get that where it was visible so keep that in mind too if you're working with um, patterns that have a specific design to it and you want certain parts of it to show up you'll have to be really careful about that and just be mindful of it that's going to be awkward let's see here I'm going to have to move a little stuff around because trying to cut this with this camera in front I'm going to move y'all off to the side and kind of move this to the side so I can actually make this more easier on me to cut it and looks like I've shifted things my bottom's not exactly straight either okay so I want okay well I'm still kind of at a weird angle all right so that's about right and I'm gonna straighten and that shifted on me again I'm going to move this back down. My bottom is not exactly straight. All right. There we go. Now my bottom is straight. So to make sure that I get a straight edge on the top here, I'm going to turn this around and put my... I'll turn this where y'all can kind of see, even though it will be kind of slanted. I'm going to tilt, let that tilt forward. This is my ten and a half inch mark on this end, and I'm trying to make sure everything is straight. Okay. Well, it still didn't quite cut it. All right. There's that one piece. So I'm gonna need another one this size. This will be for the back of my case. And then I also need a small piece, this like the same size as these right here, which these right here um, are uh, seven by five. 
we're going to do a weird kind of diagonal cut on these, but I want to cut them all at the same time once I get them cut out. So I'm kind of waiting to do that part. I'm going to stack them all on top of each other and cut them all at the same time. So now I need a piece that is 5 by 7. So this up and down is... Okay, let me think. Um, I'm going to have to think about the direction of my fabric. So it needs to go 7 across this direction. This is what I need my piece to be. 5 by 7 like this. So I had to turn the direction of how I'm going to be cutting it to make sure because that's going to be this piece on the front. So, like I said, y'all, you always have to think about the direction of how you're cutting everything. And I think I'm just going to cut this little bottom portion off and get it out of the way. Because I don't need that. And that's a, that piece was a big enough piece I'm holding on to it. Because you can do a lot of different things with your scrap um, fabric. So, you never know what kind of small project you might be able to make with it. Okay, so this is my seven inch mark and then there's my five. So I'm gonna move it down an inch so I can get it exactly. So now I know I can cut these edges and I'll have a, and I can double check myself because I've already cut another piece out. Yep, so that's gonna be seven by five. You did not. There we go. And then <laughs> doing it at angles sure does. Oops. Sure does mess with me. All right. And that is small enough. I'm going to throw it in my scrap basket because I really don't believe I could make anything else with that. All right. So there's my little front piece. That's the front of my pocket. That's the back of my pocket. And that's going to go in between. Um, I'll show you how to... We're going to... Uh, after I get this other long piece cut, I'm going to show you how to cut all three of these at the same time. Um, because we're going to need an angle. Because this piece right here, it's smaller down here and bigger up here. And the pattern, if you read it, it says the pocket and the back um, it's going to be seven inches wide at the top, six inches wide at the bottom, and then it's five inches tall. So we're going to be cutting an angle on those pieces here in a few minutes. All right, so now I'm going to get my other inside piece of my bag here. So I need like the little fox here. I'm going to need another ten and a half by six and a half. So I'm going to just turn it because this is almost what I need it to be. And I'm I've got a straight edge to start with at the bottom here. So I'm going to start with that, and I'm going to go ahead. And I know I'm not going to have a whole lot left at the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and just cut that loose. Um, that's probably... Mm, I'll hold on to that. I'm going to hold on to that piece because it's a little bit... Let's see here. I'm going to turn this around so I'll know that this is 6 by 10. And let me make sure my half mark. I didn't quite have it on my half mark. I was getting a little bit in a hurry. It's better to double check your measurements instead of getting in a hurry. Because once you cut it, you're done. And I don't have any more of this fabric, so if I messed up, I couldn't cut anymore. I'd have to use something different. There we go. Got that piece. And if you... I'm going to turn it because... I have an easier time when I'm using this rotary cutter pulling it towards me than pushing it away. So that's what I'm going to do. 
All right. Let's go throw that scrap away. Oops. This in my trash can. I wanted to make sure I got it in my trash can because I have dogs. I don't want them to get a hold of that. I don't know what they would do with it. Okay, so there's my inside piece. Well, this is the part that's going to be showing. This is going to be on the back. So there's my three pieces for the back piece. And here's my pocket. I'm going to turn this again. So it's going to be right in front of me. All right, so with this piece, we're going to... Um, I'm going to go ahead and iron this interfacing before I cut it. Um, that way they'll all be the same size um, and it'll stay in place better too. So when you're ironing it, I'm going to have to move this back a little bit. Well, I don't know. I guess it won't matter. You're going to look at your interfacing and see the side that's got the little bumps. You can actually feel them. Um, these are, um, I guess more or less it's glue, um, and you do not want to touch that part to your iron because it would stick to your iron. That's the part that needs to be down on your fabric. So you need to line that up nice and neat with your fabric, and um, you want to make sure that none of the edges of that glue is showing on the top part. Yeah. And you're going to change your setting on your iron to wool. You don't want it quite as hot as you would normally do on um, cotton. The cotton setting is a little too warm for, for the interfacing for this particular kind. Um, you can do it at a higher temperature, but we don't have to have a really stiff um, like when I was reading the directions, it said that if you wanted to have a, oh, for it to stick to it a lot better, to to do a different setting and so forth. But we just want it to pretty much lightly stick to it. So the wool setting is just fine. And when you do this, you're just going to press. You're not going to iron, you know, iron across it. You're just going to press it for about 15 seconds and put a little pressure on it while it's doing that. To make sure and then move and press move this out just a little bit and make sure all corners get pressed good I'm going to test it in a minute and make sure that it's actually sticking good and let's see all right, as long as the corners don't come up easily, which I don't. That one's coming up a little bit, and that one is too. That must have been when my iron was still heating up, so I forget mine. Um, whoops, I don't want it to steam. That's another thing. You don't want it to steam whenever you're doing interfacing. Okay, let's see if that pressed good. I need to do that other corner again. Looks like it shifted on me a little bit. Yeah, it feels like it's sticking good, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and press my other one before I cut those smaller pieces. <laughs> And I'm going to move this up away from what I'm doing a little bit more so it's not so close. Alright, so I'm going to, this is the sticky side again. I'll show you again. It's got little bumps on it that you can feel and that's little things of glue. You're going to line it up exactly and face it downwards where you're pressing the cotton, not the interfacing. And you're just going to put some pressure on it to press it. And I said about 15 seconds for each section, which I'm not really counting. I'm just kind of hoping I'm doing it <laughs> for 
15 seconds or more. Okay, I have to move my arm. Oh, hey Mitzi. And Alice was watching too, hey. Alright, let's see. Move this a little bit more. And I'm just trying to get my interfacing stuck to this fabric. And um, you're just doing a press. You're not actually moving your iron across it. So you want to put a little bit of pressure on it. And I'm going to check on it and see how well it's stuck. Oops. Sorry. It's the one thing about having a camera while you're doing live stuff. Uh, that little corner sticking up just a little bit. <laughs> you could have came by and got some supplies from us, Mitzi. I, uh, I tried to let you know about that. I was wanting to see if you would come by and get some. Okay, so I've got that stuck to it. Alright, and um, so I'm going to set that to the side. I'm not even looking at my directions like I'm supposed to. I hope I didn't skip a step and do something wrong. <laughs> I usually always watch the... Okay, I didn't mess up too badly, I don't think. Yeah, because we're going to sew our pocket. And do it. Alright, because we're going to sew our pocket anyway. Um, I'll show you real quick. Once I, we get our pocket cut the way we're supposed to, we're going to be sewing the pocket to the bottom portion of this anyway. So we don't want to sew this on yet though. Because we'll be turning stuff inside out. Okay, now that we're done with pressing for this portion of it, I'm going to move my iron out of the way. We'll need it again in just a little while. Okay, so now we're going to take these pieces and I'm just going to line them. And I'm going to move this back down again so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Okay, so we want to line them all up because we want to cut them all the same size. Alright, so... We're going to be doing a diagonal cut on this because we want the, look at the directions again, it said we need the top to be 7 inches wide, which it already is, but the bottom is going to be 6 inches wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this, there's my 7, and let me get my water soluble. Um, marker and um, since we want it six inches wide that means we need to take a half an inch at the bottom here so I'm gonna mark the half inch mark on either end and that would make let me make sure I lined it up correctly I have a puppy dog making noises in the background I apologize Let's see. I keep forgetting my board here has marks on it, too. So that one's off by a little bit because I keep shifting it. It should be about there. Okay. So what you're going to do is you already know the top is 7 inches. And you want to go at a diagonal. So here's my half inch mark here. So I'm going to move it to this side of the mark. Move that over just a little bit. You would mark it like this, and you would cut that little, this little piece off, like so. I'm just going to use my rotary cutter to do that. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Mitzi. All right, so I'm going to turn this to make it easier on me. So I know I want to have that angled, and I have all three pieces together so I know when I cut this it's gonna cut I'm still kinda feeling awkward about doing this I might have to turn it this direction for me alright so I'm just 
just gonna cut that, which you still didn't want to cut. All right, so now I've got that corner, and then I'm gonna do this other one. I needed this it to be slanted too, so I got my corner lined up with my little dot that I had marked earlier. So there we go. So, so now we've got our pocket where it's going to be, if you remeasure it, seven inches at the top, six inches at the bottom. So that's, that's our pocket piece. We've got it measured the way we want it. I'm going to put my marker back up. I don't believe I'm going to need that again. All right, so this is just my interfacing and that piece. And um, our directions are telling us the ones that I printed off for you guys, they did a lot of more decorative things with theirs. Um, I'll show you for those of you that don't have the pattern. They did a cute little ribbon at the top of theirs. I kept mine plain. If you have ribbon and you want to sew ribbon across the top, that is fun. Um, another thing that they did that we're not going to be doing is they put this trim on theirs too. I decided not to do that. Um, I think I am going to try to make my corners a little more uh, rounded this time around though because the first time I did it um, I made just straight you know regular corners but I think I'd like to have it more rounded this time. Alright so um, the next thing we've got to do is um, we're going to take this pocket, um, which, oh yeah, there's one other thing that I, I skipped. We're supposed to sew our pocket pieces together. I got them all lined up correctly and got ahead of myself. So, you're going to take, before we sew it to the front, you're going to put your right sides facing each other. Well, I got a little string there that's hanging. Let me get a scissors. I knew I was trying to get ahead of myself. All right, before we put the pocket on, we need to have the right sides. That's my right side facing. Um, this really, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's the right side looks like that on both sides of this one. So we want them laying the right sides laying on top of each other, and we're gonna sew just the top portion together, and then once we get that sewn. Then we're going to turn it uh, over and then flat, you know, iron it flat, and then we'll sew it to the front of this. So um, I have currently black fab or fabric um, uh, thread in my sewing machine, so I'm going to have to take a moment oops, to change that out once we get moved over there. So I'm going to move over to my sewing machine. Pocket over here. I'm trying to think. Um, I think I'm going to swap to um, an orange thread. Let's see if I have any orange thread that matches. That's kind of a dark orange. I have some other orange. Let's see. Let me see what if this looks like. Hmm. Well, I've got some orange. I think um, I'm going to use that. It's, I think, close enough. Because I wanted it to kind of coordinate. Well, I'm holding it on top of my fabric, and I don't really like the way it looks. Because um, I'm looking at it with the... It looks... Well... It's a little too orangey, almost. But... Mm, Oh well, that's what I got. I'm going to use it. I like it to match a little bit better than that, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to move this down a little bit more so you guys can see what I'm doing. Alright, so I'm going to take my black 
thread out of here and take it out of the top part here too. Y'all can't see that part. Okay, so move that out of the way. All right, so let's get my thread popped in. And white thread probably would have worked too. I'm just always trying to use the different color threads that I have to use them up. Um, since I got on a kick on getting a bunch of different colored threads, I thought, well, I want to use what I have whenever I can. Because it only takes a moment to swap out your thread. It's not a difficult thing to do, really. Especially when you get used to it after you've done it a million times. Alright, so now we got our thread. Um, and before you get sewing, since we're doing stuff that is going to be a little bulkier than normal, um, you're going to need to change your dials on your sewing machine. Right now, I have mine set um, for the length of my stitch on four, which is one of the longest stitches. I'm going to leave it on that because that's a good one for um, bulky um, things when you're sewing it. Right now it's not going to be extremely bulky, but when I put the two pieces together, it's really going to be quite bulky. And then I've got mine on two, which is for my straight stitch. And I think I could go to four on the tension right in the middle. I might have to go to three whenever I'm putting... Um, it all together but just this piece I think um, the tension on that one would work fine so you kind of have to know your machine to to know what kind of setting you need to have it set on for the thicker types of uh, sewing you know different thicknesses of the fabric and so forth so I'm gonna go ahead and start with mine in my fabric here and I'm gonna try to do about a fourth of an inch which I think months set a little bit bigger than a fourth of an inch. So let me move all these cords out of the way so I can actually get my foot to the pedal here. Maybe. <laughs> Not kicking too many things around here. I think I might just kick my shoes off. Y'all don't care, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. I have a lot more space that way. All right. And I've just got a regular, normal um, sewing foot on here. And it looks like I have everything turned on. So I'm going to reverse first. And I'm only going to be, this is the top of my pocket, not the bottom that I'm sewing together. Oops. And I probably should have um, <laughs> pinned my stuff together because it looks like my fabric is shifting on me. See how it did that? It shifted quite a bit. I did not anticipate it doing that. Um, trying to think if it's going to make a big difference. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference, so I'm not going to worry about it this time. Usually I would rip it out. It's going to be on the edge. So, I'm going to cover it up. <laughs> I'm not going to worry. That's a pretty big shift. Normally, I wouldn't just let something like that go, but um, this is a small project, and um, let me make sure. Wow. That sure did. Um, let me see here. Let's see how much of a difference it's going to make if I smooth it over. Okay, I smoothed it over. So I think I'm going to make it, let me show you all what I did. I kind of smoothed it over. It kind of matched on this edge when I did that. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut that thread off because I'm going to be ironing this down. But um, this is going to be the front of my pocket, and this is going to be the inside. 
So I'm going to need to iron it. And I'm going to pay attention when I'm ironing it to try to make sure that I line up my edges good. I'll just trim off that excess fabric. And since I'm going to be, yeah, that's not going to be a problem too much, I don't think. Okay, so let's iron this and fix the mistake that I made. Sometimes you have a little bit of a wiggle room when it comes to sewing, and sometimes you don't. It just kind of depends on the project. So, sometimes it'll make a bigger difference if things shift on you, and other times it won't. You just kind of have to judge it for yourself, um, how much it's going to affect it. I'm going to move that up just a little bit higher. I don't want to get it too close where y'all can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to first iron it flat this direction, and then I'm going to fold it over. Because it's going to take my iron just a little bit to um, heat up anyway, because it it goes in the, like a safe mode. It kind of kicks off, and it gets, doesn't stay hot all the time. Okay, it's warming up. I want it to be... Oh, I'm going to kick up the temperature on it, back up to cotton, because I'm not putting my interfacing on anymore. Okay, so you want your edge to be nice and smooth where the orange is really not showing too much on the top. So now I'm going to press the top. And I believe they didn't do this because they put ribbon across the top of theirs. I'm going to sew um, my pocket down in the front. I did that on my other one too. So I'm going to sew down and do a top stitch across the top. Um, once that cools off, because it's nice and hot. And then once I do my top stitch, the next step will be to sew this to the front of the inside part. I'm going to double check my directions here to make sure I'm not skipping anything. Um, and um, I might round my edges too. I didn't, like I said, I didn't do that on my other one, but I might. Let's see. got a thing that you can round corners with. And, um, I might use that to round off my corners later. I'm not going to do it right this second. But, um, alright, so we will sew that pocket to it, and we're not going to be doing trim, so I'm not going to worry about that part. Oh, I, I forgot this one doesn't show pictures for every step. Um, because uh, after we get the pocket sewn to it, we're going to be laying, and they don't even have a photo for this, which is, they just tell you. Once we get the pocket sewn on, you're going to take your other fabric, and we're going to put it face down on top of everything. And we're going to sew all the way around it, but we're going to leave a two inch gap here so we can turn it right side out. So um, that's going to be the last, one of the last steps. So, um, I forgot. That that kind of threw me that they didn't have that in there. Alright, so I got all this other stuff. Alright, so I'm going to move my iron back out of the way. And move you guys back. Let's see. Tilt you up just a little bit. Well, this stuff all moves a lot. Okay. So, um, we're going to just ta uh, do the top stitching on the pocket first. So, I'm going to move that in just a little bit more so I can back stitch a little bit. 
And I want it kind of close to the top, so I'm going to move it over just a tiny bit. Start with it inside. Let's see if I can... I always like to get it where y'all can see a little bit better. So I'm going to raise it up so you can see above. I know that kind of almost touches my machine when I do that, but... All right, so I'm gonna back stitch first. And if it, mine was trying to get hung up a little bit, um, it, that's why I was going slowly to see what it was gonna do. Um, and if that happens, um, if you notice it's gonna have problems pulling it through, you can grab these two pieces of string back here and pull on them as um, you're sewing forward and they'll help advance it. So. so this is just the top stitch. Almost to the bottom or back here. Just a little bit. Alright. So we got the top of the pocket. And this next step before we sew it. I am going to go ahead and do what I should have done on the other one, is pin my pieces together. So let's get my excess threads off of here. And we're going to start with, I'm going to pin the bottom first. Just make sure you get it nice and lined up with your corners there. Okay, so the that's the main part. You want to make sure that's lined up first before you try to line up these sides. So you're going to kind of move it inwards a little bit to get it lined up. And uh, that's going to be, see how I got a gap? That didn't quite work on mine. So I need to make sure it's going to stay lined up. And mine is a little too long, so I'm having to let that fabric kind of stick out a little ways. You mostly just want to make sure that's going to lay flat. And you're going to need to get another uh, needle in there to get it as flat as possible and so then I'm going to do my other side I'm going to have to scoot it in just a little bit but then flatten it out and then pin it in place make sure you've got it lined up good hmm it still seems a little I think it's because it's just so bunched up. I'm going to lay it flat on the counter here while I pin it. See if that helps a little bit. Alright, and then you want to make sure you pin your bottom too. Because this is the type of thing that wants to pucker on you. And I'm going to pin it twice on the bottom just to make sure. And I'm going to hold it flat with my countertop here. That's why it's good to have a nice hard countertop and not something soft when so that way when you're pinning uh, your pins won't go into anything but your project okay so now I got it completely pinned down and I'm gonna start on this end and I'm gonna sew all the way around to, to sew down my pocket I'm going to start just above, well, just right where my pocket's going to be, I think right above it there. And I'm going to line it up. You want to make sure all your fabric is lined up really good, too. You don't want to miss anything. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and start with my needle in my fabric.
and I barely lucked out just then. My needle did not hit my pen. <laughs> I did not pull my pen out of the way. I think that's the first time I've ever left a pen in while I was sewing before and sewed over it. And I was just very lucky not to run over it and break my needle. Okay, I'm going to sew to the end and then I'm going to back up because that's closer to the end than the one I want to be. I wasn't sure how close it was getting. All right. Never realized how much of a challenge it would be to sew whenever you got so many things in front of your face and you know where you can't see your sewing machine as well. People that do these videos all the time, like, wow, how do you do that? Okay, I think that's close enough to my corner. So when I pivot. I'm going to try to get as close as possible because uh, the way that this corner is, I don't want that pocket to come loose before I get to it. And I'm going to go ahead and back up. I don't think I backed up on the other side, did I? No, I got so startled from... <laughs> Running over that needle that I did not realize that I had not backed up on the other side, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to be sewing over that anyway later whenever we uh, put the other piece on. So it'll get reinforced whenever we put this other piece on. So I'm just cutting off my excess threads right now. Okay. So... Now we've got just the this piece and nothing on the back yet. And we got our pocket on. That doesn't look too bad with a solid orange on the inside. You're not going to really be able to see it anyway. All right, here's my back piece. So I'm going to turn it around where it's facing. Um, right side's facing my other fabric. And I'm going to pin it down too. This is going to be a little more difficult to pin down because of... Um, the pocket. I'm getting some different colored um, needles for my starting and stopping points and once I get them pinned I think I'm gonna round these corners uh, kinda cut them off. Once I get everything pinned down I'll come back through and uh, mark off these corners to be rounded off. Okay. So you just want to make sure everything's nice and flat. And we're going to leave our hole on the side, not the top. I thought um, it was going to have me do it at the top whenever I was reading it, but since we're going to be putting that circle grommet there, it's probably a better idea to have the, the hole on the side. I know we won't put the grommet in until after all of this is put together, but I think that was a good choice on their part. All right, so my side here is where we're going to leave the opening, so... This is going to be my stopping point, and I need about a couple of inches so to be able to turn it right side out. A little bit more. So this is where I'm going to start sewing, and that's going to be right above my pocket area. And so we want to lay that nice and flat. I think I'm going to pin it right where my pocket is. It's hard to go through. There we go. So, just, and I'm going to flip this over once I get done pinning it just to make sure everything is lined up the way it's supposed to be. Because you don't want some of your stuff not lined up because you might end up with a hole when you get done. If it's not completely. And see, this is where it gets difficult lining it up because I'm going to do my other corner since it's getting a little tough to pin it. I think to pin it straight it'll be easier if I do this corner first. So I'm gonna pin it first. It's 
trying to buckle, buckle on me. So I'm going to actually turn my fabric upwards to get it to lay flat. And I'm going to pin it twice because it is being so ornery. Because I want it to be as flat as possible when I'm sewing it. And it didn't quite come all the way to the end here. It is giving me fits. Ow. All right, that's a little bit better. Okay. So, I bet y'all are having issues too. So, I'm going to pull this nice and well. I think I'm going to pull it this way and hold it down flat and pin it and then make sure this fabric is pulled over far enough to my corner pocket and I'm going to pin it. There we go. It's trying to give a little bit on me. But we're going to be coming from this direction when we're sewing, so I'm going to be pulling and double-checking on all of that. I'm going to have to get some more pins. Let's see here. Okay, so now we've got pinned all the way around. And I already marked my starting and stopping with the different colored pins. That I just do that because it makes it easier on me to um, remember to stop. Anytime that I got in a hurry, like I was making a bunch of those face masks, um, I was not pinning any of that when I was sewing it together. And I would sew it completely closed because I wasn't putting pins on it to let myself know to stop and leave an opening so I can turn it right side out. So having different colored pins to indicate that if that works for you, then go for it because it, it whatever to make things easier when you're sewing because sometimes you get so into sewing your project you're ready to be done and <laughs> you can uh do like i do make mistakes and um sew something shut when you don't want to be doing that all right so i'm going to line this up with where i wanted to start oh and i didn't do what i said to do i'm going to look at the back side I'm looking at the back of my project to make sure that I don't have any uh, stuff that that's not lined up properly. It looks like I don't have anything sticking out that's not going to get done. And another thing I said I was going to do, I was going to round my corners. Um, I don't think I'm going to cut them right now. I think I'm just going to mark them and sew them that way. And then I'll cut it when I get done. So I'm just going to take this little um, tool that I have that helps me make uh, circles and decide how. I don't know if I like that. I might use this end. Yeah, I like this one better. So I'm going to, well, I need to move it down a little bit. I forgot it's not going to mark it exactly where I want it. So when I sew my corners, I'm going to sew over that line. I'm trying to think. I don't think I got them exactly the same. Hmm. Yeah, that one's a little bit different. That's closer. Hey Brian, could you turn that down? Uh, my husband's watching the movie. Um, it's kind of loud. <laughs> Forgive me for all the hollering in the background for the movie, whatever movie my husband's watching. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay, he turned it down. Yay. I'm at home if you can't tell. 
All right, so this is my starting point. So I'm going to take that white needle out of the way. And I'm going to start with my needle in the fabric. I'm just going to go forward a couple and then I'm going to back up a couple. Okay. I'm just going to go, I'm going to get a little closer to my pocket area. I might manually do this to avoid hitting my needle or my pin. I'll pull that out of the way. And tension. I'm going to look. Hmm, doesn't look bad. Okay, I guess my tension's looking okay, so I'm not going to adjust it. Right next to the needle. Yay, I didn't actually hit it. Let's see, I'm going to go a little bit more down. Hmm, I think I'm going to back up. There we go. It never hurts to back up a little bit if you need to. I always like to go a little further than I need to, just in case, because if having it reinforced is always better than not. Since this is so tight, I'm getting a lot closer to my pins than I normally would. I usually pull my pins out a lot sooner, but because if you ever get that close to it and you can't get to your pin, just make sure your needle and your uh, sewing machine is all the way through your fabric before you lift your um, pressure foot. Um, that keeps um, your fabric from shifting on you while you do that. Okay, that's a little too far, so I'm going to back up. I want to be right in the corner. Oops. done. The only other thing we're going to do here um, besides put the grommet in is we're going to do a top stitch. She didn't, uh, the pattern that I gave out did not have a top stitch because of the, um, I think it's because they did the, um, oh the little uh, edges, um, what's those little pom-poms that they put on theirs? as a decoration but um oh and I so didn't do my corners like I wanted to oh well I was going to do the rounded corner hmm it's really not too let me look and see oh well yeah I could the way I drew it I didn't do it right anyway okay I'm not going to have a rounded edge whatever <laughs> I didn't draw them in the right place, so it wouldn't have worked. Looks like my fabric was trying to get bunched up on me. Come on, fabric. Hmm. Let's back up one. Okay, so now we're coming back around to where I'm going to have to stop. This is my stopping point, so I'm going to put that down, and then I'm going to back up a couple of stitches. All right. Okay, so now we're going to turn it right side out. So I'm just going to cut my excess threads off. Oops, sorry. And uh, turn it 
Well, I'm also going to, on my corners, um, I'm going to use my pinking shears and cut those. If you just have regular scissors, you can cut your corners off too. But I'm just going to, to make those less bulky, I'm just, I'll just show you. I'm just cutting it off like that. And you can use regular scissors for that too. It doesn't have to be pinking shears. Okay. So I got my corners cut before I turn it right side out. And if you have a point turner, that'll help. Like I've got a couple of them. I got a wooden one and a plastic one. And it's just um, once you turn your project right side out, it helps make your point come out better. So we're gonna just turn it right side out. This one's gonna be kind of bulky. But just work on it slowly, don't, you know, force it. Mine looks like one big ball. But then, start pulling on the pocket. And ta-da! And I'm going to push my corners out. I guess they're going to be a little rounded anyway, instead of pointed. Oops, don't want to poke a hole through it. Be too forceful <laughs> with the the point turners there. That's I keep forgetting sometimes. Um, if you're too forceful, you can poke a hole in it. Because they are kind of a sharper edge than some things that you get that do this. I'm going to work out as much as I can with my fingers and then I'll... And these corners are going to be a little bit harder to get out because it's got interfacing on both pieces. So... Come on. And when we do the top stitching, if you don't get your corner out real good, then it makes it even tougher going over it. Okay. Alright, so um, now all I got to do is um, iron this down, flatten it out so um, we'll be able to do the, um, let's see, where's my other scissors, to do the top stitch. Um, and to close up that hole and then we'll draw our circle for where we're going to put our grommet and putting the grommet on is really easy actually it's super easy um actually I wonder if I could turn my hole or pointer out with yeah I guess it works a little bit too okay so let's go iron this I'm going to get these scissors out of the way Get it to come back on. Actually, I've also got um, something that will help me. If you, these come in handy, I've bought one of these um, at Tuesday morning before. You could stick it inside of things whenever you're ironing them, uh, and then also the other sides for getting fuzz and stuff off. But this this helps with curved stuff whenever you want to iron it down. Which is kind of handy. All right, so now we want make sure everything's laying flat, and that my I want my hole to fold under flat whenever I'm ironing it, so it'll be easier to do my top stitching. Get 
this whole section down and my other side I might have to use this inside of it to help kind of well no that's not gonna work because I need my edges to be flat so I'm just gonna do the edges like this because you want it to be flat whenever you do your top stitching and if you don't want to have top stitching on this you don't have to I just decided that's what I wanted to do on mine um, you can hand stitch this closed if you want with a um, invisible stitch and that would work just as fine um, I just prefer doing the um, top stitch on mine so that's why I'm gonna do mine that way and um, then we can do the other part once we get that so I'm gonna take it back over here and do that I always have to tilt that so far down So I don't really have to do any. Okay, so I want to look and see where my hole is. I'm going to start right above it to make sure that everything gets um, closed up good. So my hole's right there. So I'm going to start above my hole. And I'm going to get as close to the edge as possible. To start out here. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. I'm gonna get a little bit further to the edge. And whatever's the most comfortable for you, you don't have to get quite this close to the edge. I I like to, but um, it's gonna make it difficult on sewing getting this close to the edge because this is so bulky. But um, I guess I'm willing to give it a shot. Let's see. Let me make sure, because if you don't get everything lined up right, and you get this close to the edge, you might miss your bottom piece of your fabric, which I'm in danger of doing that if I'm not too careful. Try and make sure. Okay, I'm going to go forward and then back up. So this pocket area is going to be kind of hard. So you might have to manually walk it over it. And see, I'm hitting this spot right here. I'm going to bring it forward and see. Okay, it's working so far. Okay. Not moving very... Okay, there we go doing better. Now that I've gotten over that hump, I'm going to continue on and let it do it. Since this is kind of a curved edge, I'm going to do a little bit of a curved stitching to it. Instead of just doing a straight corner, straight edge corner, I just kind of curved it. And I'm kind of pressing down my fabric as I go to kind of make sure. A 
pull this over as much as possible. Okay. All right, it didn't get hung up, so that's good. That's a string or something. Oh, that's where I poked a hole in it. It's my little pointer. <laughs> All right, I got a lot closer to the edge than this side than I did on the other ones. But I want to line it up so with where I started. So okay, looks like I'm back where I started. I'm gonna do a couple of Back stitches and I'm done. All right, so I'm gonna cut off my threads and I'm gonna show y'all. You'll need your water soluble uh, marker to mark your uh, circle. All right, so there's my threads. I'm gonna double check my hole that it caught all my fabric like it was supposed to. Okay. All right, so it's almost done. So here's my two grommets. And this is the actual template that you get. And I use this to make the, um, the templates that I gave you. Um, and you want to, one and, let me show you the other one I did so you can kind of see. The grommet, I got a little close to the edge on that one. So I'm probably going to come down further because this comes out quite a bit. So I'm going to line it up with that so I can get a better idea. And I want to get it in the center, so we'll need a measure too to make sure um, that we're going to get it in the center. So measure across here. Mine's, if you look at it, it's about five and a half inches across here. It's kind of hard to see. Let's get closer or tilt this down some more. It's Mine's five and a half inches across. So, all right, so we're gonna go in. That's one inch on both insides. That's an inch, that's an inch. And then we've got a half an inch, a half an inch, and then right there's the middle. So I'm just going to put a dot right there for my center. And then, oh, I put my marker up and I still needed it. Okay. So you're going to take this and line, there's my little dot I made. And I kind of want to see where this is going to go. That's in the center. So I want to leave enough of an edge of the top. I believe that's going to work. Let's see. That's for the hole. Okay. All right. So now that I got, I want to make sure it's straight up and down. And then I'm going to draw. Okay, so I got my circle drawn, and to put this on, um, if you don't have a rotary cutter, which that's what I'm going to use to cut a hole in the middle in order to get my scissors in there, but if you don't have a rotary cutter, all you have to do is fold your fabric in half, and which I guess I'm going to do that because I'm not on a, one of those mats right now. If I do that, it's going to ruin my countertop. So just fold it in half. And then snip it, well, start a hole in it, like so. And then you're going to cut, cut your circle out. So just come around. Just 
be really slow about it because you get several layers of fabric that you're cutting through. You want to make sure you can get it as even as possible as you're cutting it too. And cutting less fabric is better than more. That way, if you don't want to cut too much out for the grommet, um, but you can always cut a little more off if you cut it too not big enough to begin with. But if you go too big, then you've done the entire project and then messed it up with this part. Which, that would be no fun at all. I've, I've messed my projects and some other ones on other things before at the very end, and it wasn't any fun. I was able to, sometimes you can fix some, but it doesn't end up as nice as it would have been originally. If you'd gotten it right the first time. So it's always better to err on caution. Okay, so now I got my circle cut out, and then you should have one that looks like this, one that looks like this. Put the one that has the more grooves in it on the back, and line it up. Make sure that your fabric goes on the outer edges that of that very middle section, and you just take your other one and line it up. Make sure it doesn't move on you while you're doing it. And you're just going to have to... Boy, this is kind of hard. I can't see what I'm doing. Kind of shift it until... The other one went straight together, no problem. Did I do it the opposite way? Hmm. It's interesting. Am I not holding my tongue right? <laughs> I got a bad piece that won't go together. Huh. Well, right, I'm going to grab these other ones. But... Yeah, that one just didn't, that one's got a mark on it. Maybe it would have went if I would forced it. Okay. I've got marks on my countertop. Okay. I think it would have fit if I forced it. But... Okay. So now we're done. Oh, goodness. I undid the wrong thing. I wanted to move up just a little bit further away. So, there's mine. Now, um... I will tell you um, in the the uh, thing that I gave you the directions, they show it hanging from your actual charger um, while it's in the outlet. That's not advisable or safe to do that. So um, the person said that what she did, and and whenever I took a picture of mine, I took it over to. I'm gonna do this somewhere where I want to keep it. Use one of the 3M hooks and hook it to that. Um, when you go to put your phone in it, it's going to flop forward like this. Don't worry about that. Um, if you have, you're going to turn your phone upside down when you're putting it in there. And so the part that is, the charging part is going to be, you know, sticking up here. Loop the wire over the top of this and it'll keep it from falling forward. So it'll, it'll work that way. Because that's what I had to do with mine. So that is it. Let me flip this back. And um, I'm Pat and Taylor. Uh, whenever y'all get your projects done, um, please feel free. And anybody else, if if y'all make this project, um, if anyone else makes it, um, I'm just picking up my mess around here. Uh, please uh, tag the library or um, put it in our com the comment sections of this live video. I'd love to see um, your finished project. That would be really cool to see. I like to see what other people do. Um, and that was the one thing I really miss a lot about not having our um, programs in the library right now where people can come in and, and do the programs because 
at the end of the night, I always get to see what everyone else has made, and it's always been really fun. So, um, so if y'all do make it, I mean, if you don't mind posting a picture of it in the comments, that I'd, I'd love to see them. And uh, next week, um, it will be the baby um, hat and bib. And I should have the advertisement for that up, um, I think it's supposed to post around 9 o'clock tonight. So it should be posting on Facebook soon. And um, to sign up for supplies for that one, just um, call the library tomorrow, or you can start calling the library tomorrow to do this. But please give me like until at least 10 o'clock to get the sign-up sheet typed up and ready for you tomorrow. But um, starting 10 o'clock tomorrow um, until... Um, I would say, um, give me until Wednesday. Please at least let me know by Wednesday and before the end of day on Wednesday would be nice because, um, uh, I have to get the stuff cut out and into bags and ready for everybody. Um, so if you can let me know before Wednesday of next week, that would be great. Um, so I can gather the supplies together for you guys, um, on Wednesday when I'm at work. Um, and have them ready, um, hopefully before the end of that day. Um, if not, at least ready the next morning for people to pick up. But um, so uh, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed making that. Or or if you didn't make it this time, then maybe later on. Um, and if y'all think of any projects that you would like to learn how to make, um, send me a link. Or a, a, we have a instant messaging on on our um, library page. You can always. A message saying, uh, hey, I'd like to see us do this project and have a link to it um, for the Crafting with Opal class. And I, I love suggestions. That's um, I, I, Otherwise, I'm just doing stuff that I see. <laughs> and I sometimes get some really great suggestions from people. I do have um, a lot of stuff lined up right now for the next couple of months, but um, I'll eventually do the class. I mean, if you suggest something, I'll probably do it because um, these are classes we do even when we're open um, and not close to the public. So, And keep checking back on our Facebook page because um, the library is working on trying to at least open to the public limitedly sometime maybe next month, hopefully. Um, they, they're trying real hard to figure out when and how we're, we could do it. Um, and it'll be very limited, of course. It won't be full hours, and it'll be only so many people at a time and so forth. But keep checking on our Facebook page, because we will put updates on that um, pretty often. All right, well, y'all have a good night, and um, I'll, maybe I'll see y'all tomorrow for my Sewing 101 class at 1 o'clock. I'm going to be covering some more basics um, on sewing, and um, I'm going to go over a couple of cool sewing feet that I've did not realize I owned them, but I did not realize how cool they were and how much fun it would be to actually start using them more often. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate some of those tomorrow and tell y'all what I was doing wrong to do the sewing foot last week that it didn't work on the machine that I was trying to get it to work on. I, I had everything reversed. Um, figures, you know. <laughs> so, um... I'll, I'll see y'all tomorrow or next week at 7 again. So see y'all later. Bye.